All right, we're going to end this chapter now. So we made it through. Woohoo! Last um, last handout, 19i is going to talk a little bit about breaking that clot down. So in the last video, I talked about how we form a clot. We go through the blood clotting process. We form fibrin. Fibrin, remember, is that insoluble uh, protein that forms the blood clot itself. This was done by a cascade of blood clotting factors, remember? So, um, after we have repaired the damage, this blood clot needs to go away. We don't want to keep any blood clots. So we're going to get rid of the blood clot through a process called fibrino, uh, uh, fib bleh, bleh, bleh. I can't talk, through a process called fibrinolysis. All right. Now fibrinolysis is going to take that blood clot and it's going to break it down. So it says the fibrinolytic system dissolves the small inappropriate uh, clots and the clots at the site of repair. So fibrinolysis is the uh, dissolution of a clot. All right. Now this is not as uh, complicated as forming the clot, that huge cascade of events, but it is um, something that is going to require some of those same mechanisms some of those same processes with uh, blood clotting factors and different proteins interacting. This is not a positive feedback system. This is a negative feedback system. So uh, let's get to handout 19i. So 19i, here we go, is fibrinolysis. Now what we want to do when we break down a blood clot is we want to form a protein that can break down the fibrin. The protein that breaks down fibrin is called plasmin. So plasmin is going to break down the fibrin. See the little scissors? We're cutting the fibrin. Now we start with an inactive form of plasmin called plasminogen. Plasminogen is the inactive form of plasmin. And Plasminogen is just floating around in your bloodstream doing its thing and as long as it's not active we're going to keep any blood clots. So what we do is we're going to activate plasminogen into plasmin. All right. So these blue areas are going to activate the plasmin. So I'm going to zoom out here just a tad so that we can see uh, there are uh, three basic sets of, of um, proteins that can activate plasminogen and turn it into plasmin. All right. The first one is called tissue plasminogen activator. Tissue plasminogen activator is abbreviated TPA. What it does is it turns plasminogen into plasmin. Also, uh, clotting factors 11, active 11, and active 12 can also cause plasminogen to become plasmin. And then we have an enzyme called urokinase, and urokinase is involved in turning plasminogen into plasmin. Now, you may have heard of tissue plasminogen activator, TPA. It's probably been on every medical TV show ever made. Someone is having a blood clot that they shouldn't, and the doctor will yell, we need TPA stat. So if you administer TPA, what you're going to do is you're going to cause this fibrinolytic system to kick in, and it's going to break down any blood clots. Now, this is important to, to realize that this is what you do when someone's having like a stroke. All right. If someone has a stroke or a heart attack where you've got a blood clot that is preventing blood flow to the heart or brain, you got to break up that blood clot. And our body can't produce enough TPA, urokinase, and those clotting factors uh, fast enough to 
to break down any blood clot that may be causing a stroke or a heart attack. So if uh, a person is having uh, this issue, the emergency room will administer TPA and TPA will quickly break down that blood clot. So imagine someone's having a stroke, they uh, determine that the stroke is a, uh, um, a blood clot, they will administer TPA and that will break down the blood clot and open up the blood vessel for blood flow. And hopefully if they do that quick enough, uh, the person can recover. You know, you've, uh, you've probably heard these commercials talking about strokes where they, they uh, mention that time loss is brain loss. And uh, that's very true because the longer the person is going without oxygen delivery to their brain, the more the brain can die or be impaired, and then the person uh, will have a harder time recovering from that. The quicker you can get them into the hospital to get TPA to break that blood clot down, the faster uh, blood is restored to the brain, and the the less blood, uh, the less uh, brain is uh, damaged. So that's a really important thing. Now. When we have a clot, let's say you've cut yourself and you form a clot, you don't want the fibrinolytic system to kick in. You don't want plasminogen to make plasmin. So the red parts of this are going to be things that inhibit this from happening. So it says plasminogen activator inhibitor 1 and 2. It's going to act on TPA and urokinase. It just physically blocks these two from doing their job. And then um, antiplasmin and macroglobulin can take this plasmin that's created and just grab onto it and prevent it from breaking down the fibrin. So these um, items in red <clears throat> are going to be examples of ways that we inhibit fibrinolysis. We don't want that fibrinolytic system to work while we have a blood clot. So this is a, um, an example of how we can prevent that from occurring. All right, so uh, make sure that you get that all written down. Now, <clears throat> there's a little trick. I, I wanna show you a little vocabulary trick before we end and talk about the way these words are. So uh, when we were dealing with the um, blood clotting, you may have noticed that we had fibrinogen. Whoops, fi. I can't spell. Fibrinogen. All right. Here we have plasminogen. Now, anytime you see this suffix ogen, ogen is the inactive form. All right. Now, so if we just cover up, if I just cover up ogen, we get what is activated, fibrin and plasmin. So the uh, ogen, whenever you see that word ogen or a word that has ogen in it, it just means the inactive form of whatever precedes it. So fibrinogen is the inactive form of fibrin. <clears throat> plasminogen is the inactive form of plasmin. All right? <clears throat> so that's just a little vocabulary trick to help you. Okay, so uh, we're gonna finish out this chapter really quick and uh, let you study this material. Okay, so like I mentioned in the previous video, we have um, blood clotting that may be inappropriate. So if we have a blood clot that's inappropriate, we call it a thrombosis. So it says a thrombosis is a clot forming in an unbroken blood vessel. Uh, it shouldn't be there. Maybe it's a genetic disorder. I know several people that have a genetic um, blood clotting disorder that ca that can cause thromboses, and uh, these may 
dissolve spontaneously or they can dislodge and travel and cause major problems like a heart attack or a stroke. So a thrombosis is an inappropriate blood clot. Um, and a lot of treatment involves using things like TPA to break down that thrombosis. Okay, um, I guess it's worth mentioning a lot of times they call thromboses deep vein thromboses. They occur in the veins a lot. And so if you've heard of a deep vein thrombosis, it's an inappropriate blood clot. Something related to this is something called an embolus. An embolus is not a blood clot, but it's something else in the blood that's acting like a blood clot. So for example, uh, well, it could be a clot in certain areas, but think of an embolus as like an air bubble or a piece of fat from a broken bone that gets into the bloodstream and then travels through the bloodstream. So for example, a pulmonary embolus is a blood clot, an air bubble, or a piece of fat that gets lodged in the lungs. Now this can be, of course, fatal as well. I had an aunt, um, a great aunt, who fell and broke her leg, and then she died a couple days later because of an embolus. Her broken leg kicked off an embolus. It was a air bubble or a piece of fat that then traveled to her heart and caused a heart attack, and she died from a broken leg. So an embolus is not um, something that you want to mess with either. Um, embolus along with thromboses. Uh, can be very deadly. Um, ways to combat this would be to uh, administer blood thinners. So aspirin, for example, down here it says aspirin blocks the synthesis of thromboxane A2, which helps prevent blood clotting. Um, another thing is um, Coumadin and heparin. So I mentioned this in that other video as well, but we have two uh, types of medication that can be administered very quickly to break down blood clots or to, to uh, stop blood clots. One of them is TPA. The other one is heparin. Heparin can be uh, used uh, and administered very quickly to thin the blood. Of course, it's a double-edged sword because you don't want the person to uh, bleed out, but it, it's a very uh, quick blood thinner. One that works slower over time is that one I mentioned in the other video, Coumadin. Coumadin is a brand name, the, uh, or maybe, maybe Warfarin is the brand name. I think Coumadin's the brand name. Warfarin's the generic name of this medication. But what Coumadin slash Warfarin does is it blocks vitamin K synthesis, which then promotes uh, blood clotting. So if someone needs an immediate blood thinner, they're gonna get heparin or TPA. If they are needing a blood thinning agent that occurs over a long period of time, they're gonna take Coumadin. And that's gonna block the vitamin K and cause uh, the uh, blood to not clot as well as it should. Now, people on Coumadin, they have other issues because their blood doesn't clot uh, very well, so they have to take that into consideration. But if you have a genetic disorder where you uh, may produce thromboses that can be life-threatening, taking Coumadin every day can help prevent that. All right, so we're finished with this uh, chapter. So I hope uh, you enjoyed my videos. This is the first time I've made videos like this, so give me a break, you know, don't give me too hard of a time. Hopefully when we get into the next chapter, uh, which will be 21, this will be a little bit better. I'll get better at making these videos. Once I kind of get in the groove and just kind of treat it like I'm in class with all of you, it makes uh, makes things go smoother. But I miss you. I wish you were in class. I wish we were all in class together. And I hope you stay healthy and take care. I'll see you for the next chapter. Alrighty, bye.